Greetings and salutations my dearest friends, my name is Samantha and welcome back to Trope Week. What Trope Week is is that every single day for an entire week I pick one specific trope and I give you a bunch of recommendations on it. Today I'm going to be recommending a bunch of dark romances. Hello, how are you? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's the end of Trope Week. This is the last video. Today, this week, I've been doing a video with some of my favorite YouTubers, and we've been giving a bunch of book recs, and it's been a blast. So today, I'm going to be doing a video with Tiffany, and I just love Tiffany so freaking much. We're gonna be talking about dark romances today, and I just felt like this was a perfect trope for her. I feel like me and Tiffany have very similar reading tastes because we both just love, like, wild, crazy books <laughs> like literally the more wild the better the other day we were talking about this one <laughs> romance that's like a balloon shifter romance wild wild tiffany's energy is literally my favorite thing in the entire world she is hilarious she's so supportive she is so sweet she exudes this energy that is like electric when you're around her you can't help but smile she's wonderful and i had the privilege of meeting her in person this year and she's just as wonderful if not better person than she is in her videos like she's amazing flawless i've never met anyone that shines as bright as she does so I love her. I will leave her uh, videos down below if you want to read them. Her channel and her video down below, so make sure you watch. She reads dark romance, mafia romance, contemporary romance, novellas, everything. Everything. I adore her. Today we're going to be talking about dark romances. I've never done a dark romance video before. You know what? When I first started reading romance books, I used to say that I was like a soft bitch. Like, I really just liked soft, sweet nice low angst romance books and then I just like dived off the deep end and I feel like I just read the most wild <laughs> things now but yeah dark romance is definitely not for everyone so I do want to just preface this video with a trigger warning saying that a lot of these books explore darker themes sexual assault consensual non-consent a lot of things like literally a lot of things try to be as detailed as possible when I'm talking about these books but it is a dark romance recommendation video, so they're going to be a little intense. I know a lot of you like dark romances. I know you guys do, especially like during spooky season. It's such a good time to read it. I'm gonna hop right in into one of the darkest romances that I read and also one of my favorite books that I've ever read, and that is Untouchable by Sam Mariano. I have a whole reading vlog on this book where I like lost my fucking mind because I loved it so much. I read this in a reading vlog because it was Jen's favorite book that she recommended it to me, so I will leave her channel down below because she's talked about this book before and also leave that reading vlog. What, what to say about this book other than I just love it? <laughs> like, oh fuck, I have red lipstick all over my teeth. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, embarrassing. There the whole video. I am not restarting this video. Now I have red lipstick all over my hands. Oh my god, what a fucking mess. <gasps> all over my hands. Okay, we're moving on. I'm probably gonna get more red lipstick on my teeth. Anyways, so Untouchable by Sam Mariano. Easily one of my top five favorite books I've read. And it's dark. It's dark. It's dark. This is a bully romance. It follows our characters Zoe and Carter fucking Mahoney. <sighs> This is a high school bully romance, okay? Which is like, normally everything I don't read, but something about this book, ooh, it like, I can literally cannot stop thinking about it. Okay, let me tell you the plot. Our heroine is going through a rough time, okay? So she goes to this school that is very big on football. And one of the football players, not our main character yet, one of the football players makes her feel very uncomfortable and does not really listen to her consent. So she ends up telling the coach and getting him kicked off for the season. And everyone on the team is real pissed off because it's like his last season to play. So him and a bunch of his like football buddies go to torment and kind of like harass the heroine because she got him kicked off his the team even though it was his fucking fault anyways one of the guys in that group carter mahoney our main character ends up taking it a little too far and pretty much assaults our heroine in this book in the beginning of the book not pretty much he, he does he fucking does and our heroine is traumatized but after that whole situation happens she, oh, the thing about this book is our heroine is like the strongest heroine that I've literally ever read about. Loved her so much. Like I can't even put it into words. She very much could have 
let that situation really get to her because it was a traumatizing experience but she really decides that she wants to know why our hero does what he does and they end up forming a relationship where they explore the boundaries of consensual non-consent. Hero discovers that he really likes pushing those boundaries and pushing the boundaries of her consent and she also kind of enjoys those darker elements of their relationship so it follows that and I just I've never read a book like it ever. Their relationship would seemingly be toxic and it kind of is but just like the conversations had in this book the way they explored themselves and the darker parts of themselves I just feel like it's so beautifully written. It's just a fucking wild time. It is a dark romance. There's really no other way to explain it, but I'm obsessed, like obsessed with this book. I was able to see Sam Mariano in person at a Polycon and she signed my book, Sam, to Sam, from Sam. How cute. Oh my God, it's, it's so dark. I feel like that's like the definition of a dark romance that like teeters your own moral compass, if that makes sense. Oh, okay, we have to move on. Speaking of consensual non-consent, uh, I guess that kind of leads into my next recommendation and that is Desperate Measures by Katie Roberts. This is the first book in the Wicked Villain series, which is basically like a play on Disney fairy tales. What Katie Roberts does in this series is she takes Disney villains and pairs them with the heroines. And in this book, it is Jasmine and Jafar. Jafar works for Jasmine's father and he ends up staging a coup and killing her father and taking over. Jafar have always been attracted to each other. They've always been like skirting around that boundary and they really dive in to a daddy dom baby girl BDSM relationship. It really dives into consensual non-consent that is their kink and that's like the darker part of the relationship. I mean like he literally killed her father in this book. This book all of these characters are kind of like leaders of the city and a safe space and common ground is this BDSM club that Hades owns and they all kind of like flock to this BDSM club. You get to like see them explore their kinks and their boundaries and it's just wonderful divine I really love this book I think it's such a great start to the series I love this whole series honestly next dark romance that I want to recommend is Unhinged by Onley James this is also first in the series it's the Necessary Evil series and I do think you have to read the books in order but this is a really good start to the series it's a male male romance that follows a family of serial killers our hero was adopted when he was a young boy and he was adopted by this billionaire who basically raised his kids to be serial killers and they have taken it upon themselves to like balance the line of good and evil they hunt down rapists and sex traffickers and all of the bad guys in the world that the system has not been able to catch or has not been able to do anything with and they kill them so it's kind of like killing for the greater good robin hood of serial killers if that makes sense well our hero adam he is the serial killer in this <laughs> book and he ends up killing our other hero noah's dad and noah is out for revenge and actually tries to kill adam for revenge for killing his father but it follows their romance and this also kind of toys with bdsm um adam our hero is a literal psychopath sociopath like actually diagnosed with being a psychopath and yeah it's dark it's great read this book i was obsessed our hero is an obsessive hero for sure and i kind of liked it i kind of liked how obsessed he was with our other hero it was cute and yeah he like kills people and stuff but like it makes sense in the book. The next book that I want to talk about is a paranormal romance and that is Bad Blood by Elsie Davis. This is a, a vampire series on Kindle Unlimited. It's the first book in the Godbearer series and you absolutely have to read this series in order because it is fucking wild and ends in cliffhangers. So this is a reverse harem vampire romance. Our hero unknowingly is friends with a group of vampires and this group of vampires are very loyal to a blood goddess for like 100 years or so the blood goddess is able to come back to earth inside of a vessel and in order to do that they have to make a blood sacrifice and well they they kill him mm -hmm. yep yep they convince him to come to like this isolated cabin at, for a camping trip because like they're friends they're gonna go on a camping trip well no they literally kill him with the intent for him to stay dead and for them to bring this blood goddess back and they think that this blood goddess is going to be a vessel for a witch in their cult 
well, something goes wrong with the spell and the blood goddess ends up attaching itself, herself, to our hero. He comes back to life and he's like real pissed because they tried to fucking kill him. But in the same token, they're all like faded maids and they all kind of like need each other. So it follows their romance, very dark because they tried to kill him. This book is the most wild reverse harem that I've ever read. The cliffhangers in this book, the way the plot goes, like it's so much more than a vampire romance you will come to realize. It's also an omega verse. Like I don't want to give too many spoilers because it's fucking wild, but I love this book. I read it on the airplane and devoured it. So highly recommend. The next book I want to talk about is A Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This is a pirate romance and a very loved dark romance. A lot of people like this book. It is also kind of a love triangle. Our heroine Bennett, she is a female pirate and she is on the run. This is a love triangle. She is also married to another notorious pirate and she ends up getting kidnapped by a pirate hunter. So it follows her romance between a pirate hunter and then like another notorious pirate. Again, a lot of trigger warnings in this book. Our heroine goes through it in this book, very heavy on like sexual assault trigger warnings but oh my gosh the writing the writing in this book our heroine is so badass a female pirate can we get more of those please and also i promise i'm not gonna spoil the ending for you but i want to so badly because this entire book i was like oh i don't know if i'm gonna finish i don't know if, if i'm gonna finish because it was so dark and almost made me a little uncomfortable because it just felt like our heroine was going through so much shit i felt genuinely bad for her and then i got to the ending and i was like five stars five fucking stars like the ending is perfect it's everything it needed to be and it's one of my favorite books that I read I have a reading vlog on this I read this because this is one of Crystal from Crystal Bookish Life's favorite books and I can totally understand why next book I want to recommend is the Four Horsemen series by Sarah Bailey this is another dark romance series that you can find on Kindle Unlimited and it's not paranormal despite the title of our heroes are named after the Four Horsemen but they're businessmen it's like a contemporary version of the four horsemen you have to read the series in order because it's another one of those series that ends in a bunch of cliffhangers the first book is called carnage and it is a reverse harem series so our heroes are prescott drake francis and west and our heroine is scarlet so scarlet is sent to work for their business they are like these hot shot business corporate ceos and she ends up working for their business with the intent to destroy them family has some type of rivalry with these men that's not really explained in the first book so i don't want to spoil the rest of the series but she is sent to destroy them and they know who she is scarlet suffered from amnesia when she was like 16 17 but she actually knew these men they were childhood sweethearts and they were all together when they were children and they grew up together until she had her accident and they're also looking to destroy Scarlet. So it's a dark romance. Think of literally any fucking kink. BDSM, choking, blood kink, breath play, primal play, BDSM. There's murder in this book. I mean, that's not really a kink, but literal actual murder in this book. So yeah, it's a dark romance. I, I keep calling these books wild because they fucking are. Like the plot twists in the books. There's really... This book, like... I go back and forth of if I like this book or not because it's just wild. It's a fucking wild time. I've never read anything like it. Obviously that is called the Four Horsemen series and Laura Thalassa also has a series called the Four Horsemen series and this is a paranormal romance and it is a dark romance. I just thought I'd quickly mention it. The one that I am holding is the second book. I think this is probably my favorite book in this series. I got this limited edition cover from my friend Carrie. Anyways, so this is literally following the Four Horsemen and the apocalypse. It follows pestilence, war, famine, and death as they're literally trying to destroy earth but they end up finding our heroines and our heroines kind of bring out the humanity in them all of our heroes face in these books is like an existential crisis that their sole purpose is to destroy earth but in doing so they would destroy the woman they love I love this series. Let's talk about some novellas. I have two novellas that are stalker romances. Uh, so the first one is His Muse by Casey Mint. Casey Mint writes a lot of novellas, like a lot. And they're usually like 80 to 90 pages. Most of our heroes are very like cinnamon roll heroes. But this hero is a alpha possessive stalker. He is, yeah. So this follows like her rock star short novella series. You don't have to read them in order. Our hero is this tortured artist and he ends up going on tour with this very famous rock band and produces songs for them and he ends up falling in love with a roadie. She is basically like a stagehand. He stalks her the entire tour. 
he watches her from afar and she likes it she likes the attention she likes him watching her and when the tour is over they kind of don't know what to do with themselves so she ends up going back to her small hometown and he follows her there he literally follows her to her hometown to stalk her and again she likes the attention she likes the darkness in him the one is by jessica kane jessica kane like literally writes the most insane novellas ever. All of her books pretty much have a zaddy kink. They're all forbidden age gap romances with alpha possessive heroes and this one is a stalker romance and it's called My Husband My Stalker. It follows our hero Evan who is obsessive. He I think is her neighbor originally and meets our heroine Jolie and kind of just watches her sets of cameras around her house and watches her and basically sets up their meet cute. He intentionally sets it up for him to meet her and they get married and he kind of continues to stalk her even while they're married and sort of like lives this double life and she does not realize what he's doing until she discovers like a warehouse of like cameras and videos and just him being obsessive and she likes it. She likes the attention. She likes his stalker vibes and I mean it sounds crazy a stalker romance it does but it works I, I especially because it's like Jessica Kane Jessica Kane is just Jessica Kane like she literally writes the craziest romances ever some of them are a little bit too much for even me but some of them I'm obsessed with and this is one of them so let's talk about a mafia romance series I feel like mafia romances tend to have a lot of like darker themes as well one of my favorites is the brutal birthright series by Sophie Lark I think I've mentioned this series in almost every every video this week because I'm obsessed. This is the Brutal Birthright series. I have a whole video on it. I will link down below, but it follows a bunch of darker mafia romances. So I'll talk about the first one in the series because she does have a reading order. And although you can read some of her books out of order, they're just like better. They're just better if you read them in order. So this one is Brutal Prince. So our heroine is a part of the Italian mafia and our hero is a part of the Irish mafia in downtown Chicago and they're rivals. And our heroine ends up crashing a party at the Irish mafia's house and like setting the house on fire. So our hero is real pissed. He literally wants to kill her, but their parents are like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We cannot be starting a turf war. So you guys are going to get married so that we can have an alliance. And they literally hate each other. Our heroine literally tries to kill our hero in this book. Uh, the reason there's strawberries on this book is because our hero is like deathly allergic to strawberries. And when our heroine finds this out, she like eats a bunch of strawberries, paints them all over her lips so that when they kiss, he goes into anaphylactic shock has an allergic reaction and almost dies. So yeah, they try to kill each other. It's a dark romance, but they fall in love and it becomes really cute. I was so obsessed with this book when I first read it that I literally got a tattoo. I talk about it all the time. It's my little strawberry tattoo right here on my forearm. Is this my forearm? The upper part of my forearm? I don't know. Strawberry tattoo is literally because of Brutal Prince. I'm obsessed. My favorite book in this series is Stolen Air. This is the second book in the series. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Hardless. He has some beef with the Italian Mafia and the Irish Mafia from the first book. Something happens in the first book that I don't want to give spoilers for, but he ends up kidnapping Nessa, who is the youngest daughter of the Irish Mafia, and she's like the princess, and he ends up kidnapping her with the intent to kill her and hold her for ransom to get money and kill all of her family. So yeah, it's a pretty dark, dark romance because he kidnaps her but it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Of course they fall in love. It, this is like a sunshine, heroine, grumpy hero uh, book. And this hero in this book is my everything. I love him to pieces. I definitely want another tattoo like representing this book. So that's probably gonna be my next tattoo. Another one by Sophie Lark that is a darker romance. And this is a part of her Underworld series that also ties into some of her other books. And that is Ivan. This book, our hero is a mafioso and our heroine is a, an assassin. A female assassin and is literally sent to kill him so that's how the book opens up she is sent to kill him obviously it doesn't work and he stops her and kind of like holds her prisoner and it follows their enemies to lovers romance so this one is also really great a series that i'm reading right now is her sinners duet that is there is no devil and there are no saints this one i have heard is more of a darker romance and i'm reading it right now and i'm loving it so far these are like her illustrated covers that i got signed when i went to a polycon so 
yeah, that's what I'm reading right now. It's what is on my TBR. Those are all of the dark romance recommendations that I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to check out Tiffany's video. I will leave it down below. As always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. It means the world to me. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week's edition of Trope Week. If you missed any videos, I will have the playlist down below because we did seven videos all week we did tropes. We did Marriage of Convenience. We did Friends to Lovers. We did Groveling Heroes. We did sweepingly romantic books. We had so many tropes this week and it was such a blast to film so I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. I love you. Hope you are staying happy and healthy. That's not my outro but we're going with it. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>